everybody welcome to another episode of earthly headlines uh today we're going to go over some odd manuscripts uh we're going to continue this uh little subject line and one of the last ones i did was uh one of the first customer complaints well this one is uh, a magic spell allegedly written by some sort of court magician or something back in ancient Egypt or not old kingdom Egypt but this is Coptic Egypt this is a uh, post Alexander Egypt and um, here's a photo of it and this is made of papyrus and it's a pretty bizarre photo I mean this I looks kind of like a snake but then you see on closer inspection there are two hands surrounding the bottom half of these two uh, winged creatures they look like some sort of winged creatures this one looks like it has a halo or something over its head and then this alphabet here is a uh, Coptic Egyptian which is basically it's Greek lettering and it's now located at Macquarie University the the guy who the lecturer at Korshi Dosu Oh, no, I'm sorry. The lecturer's name is Korshi Dosu at the University of Strasbourg in France. So this is the guy who published the papyrus in the Journal of Coptic Studies. This is the author, and he says, he thinks it might be a penis in them, this thing in the middle. He thinks that may be a penis. I don't know. It looks like a handle or something to me. I, uh, he thinks this, because this one has different features, he thinks that differentiating their gender so one of these is a male one is a female um, and they're attached at the hip here literally by something and then these can be interpreted as, as wings I don't know there's a lot going on with this little bizarre image here like these hands are freaking me out like what what is that and they don't have even they don't even have five fingers they have four fingers this one has five fingers maybe this one is supposed to have five too so he, Dosu, estimates that it dates back around 1300 years, which is a time when Christianity was widely practiced in Egypt. This is, uh, we'll talk more about that in a sec. They think that halo thing that I was saying, they think that's a nail in the head, which pff, who knows what that is. But again, this is supposed to be a magic spell, right? So the creature on the right has two ears or horns that we saw, um, those feathers on their bodies. Okay, so the, the Coptic language, so he, what, what does, let's see what that's, that Coptic lettering says. So it's just fragments of text have survived over the years, and part of the deciphered spell reads, I call upon you who is Christ, the God of Israel. Um, and then some parts are, are undecipherable. And then the next line is, you will dissolve. And then it mentions every child of Adam, who is the first man on earth. Alleged it also mentions Ahithophel, who, if you guys know about King David and Absalom, that's the story of Absalom. Absalom is King David's third son, and he led a revolt, and Ahitophel, he takes Absalom's side in the uprising. And that was mentioned in, uh, in this love spell as well. So they think that the, that page seemed to belong to a, a larger text, and they speculate it's a handbook that was used by a magician. I don't know how they got to that, that conclusion, but maybe like the syntax, the, or maybe they just cross-examined it with other mag uh, magicians' handbooks or something. But I guess that would make sense. Maybe it's kind of, maybe it's instructions or something. Well, I guess it is, right? Isn't that what a magic spell is? It's kind of like a recipe. I don't know. Um, the hypothetical magician's clients may have been impressed by the image on the papyrus. So like a shock value type of thing. They see this bizarre thing and then they're sold. But I don't know if it's part of a handbook, like they're saying it like it's a flyer. But if it's a if it's your handbook, are you showing that to your clients, or isn't isn't that like a professional reference like for yourself? Like when the electrician comes to your house, he doesn't show you the electrician's handbook, right? I mean, he's he might be thumbing through it, but for the most part, he knows what he's doing. I don't know. That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, from an observer point of view, we could say that the image might have enhanced the performative aspect of the spell. The client might find the weird drawings an impressive addition to the overall atmosphere and impression created by the ritual. Well, I mean, if part of the ritual is the magician holding this up and like showing it to everybody, you know, uh, that I guess that makes sense there. But it's so tiny, like that photo. If he's like holding that up to a crowd of people, they won't even see what it is. Or, I don't know, maybe, I'm an idiot, maybe it's just, a, that sketch is just a rough drawing of, like, what 
the actual prop should be. Maybe he has two life-size props that look like what's in the photo, and then the what we're seeing is just in the handbook, but it's not. He's not showing. That might be what it is. Like maybe like some. Maybe he was a prop comic or something like that. Uh, the fragmentary text makes it hard to determine what exactly the spell was used for, but Dosu said he believes that it may have been related to love, possibly in cases where there was a complex situation such as a love triangle, or where a man was in love with a woman he couldn't marry. Man, that's a hard conclusion to come to, especially if it's fragmentary text. I guess this is the reason why they came up, they came to this conclusion. Uh, Christian literary texts from Egypt which mention love spells often imply that the problem is not that the woman doesn't love the man, but that he does not have access to her because she is young, unmarried girl, protected and secluded by her family or already married to someone else. Okay, but what does the betrayal of David have to do and Adam and Eve? I don't know, maybe, uh, again, it's a magic spell. Maybe they're like, it's an incantation and call to the gods or something like that. That's an interesting, that's an interesting uh, conclusion, but that story i guess is relatable even today i guess like i mean not not coveting a young unmarried girl but i mean some a girl of age you just can't like a romeo and juliet situation i guess um and they were talking about this back then and there's a magic spell for it yeah i mean that, that I, I guess that makes sense i guess that's kind of something that the everyday person did they probably went to the magician to help their personal life kind of like how i guess maybe it's kind of how people look for guidance from like astrologers or like palm readers or something. Maybe there's some sort of comfort there because, you know, people don't visit magicians now or they didn't or different types of magicians for a different reason. Like they're just doing it for entertainment. But these people actually went to their local Merlin, wanted him to concoct a love potion or a spell like this and just to alleviate all their marital issues or their their personal issues you know that's that makes sense and it's interesting that there's a surviving manuscript uh referencing that okay so equally as mysterious as the papyrus itself is how it came into the possession of the university so the university has no records indicating who sold or donated the papyrus or when the acquisition occurred so the university has a connect a collection of about 900 papyri and most of which were uh, purchased between 1972 and 1985. And then in 2007, they stopped purchasing them altogether. So many of them were purchased from Anton and Michael Fackelman, who were antiquities dealers that were active in Austria in the 1970s and 80s. So this bundle of texts, they all date to 1300 uh, years, give or take. While that handbook is from the Fackelmans, it's not clear if the newly published Magical Papyrus is also from them. So in 1972, here's what makes it weird. In 1972, a UNESCO treaty banned the sale of antiquities that were removed from their country of origin after 1972. So if you're running an antiquities dealing business, that's bad news, right? Um, it's not certain when this papyrus or other papyri from the collection were removed from Egypt. Um, with the ongoing looting that has ravaged uh, archaeological sites, many scholars are not comfortable working with material that may have been taken out of Egypt after 1972. That means there's some sort of mar black market deal or some sort of under-the-table deal going on. It's not, er not everything's on the up and up, right? Um, some scholars believe that publishing such material may help those trying to loot and sell archaeological remains from Egypt. Yeah, they're creating a market for it if they, if they partake. There's also the question of ownership since uh, if an artifact was taken out of Egypt in 1972, then the legal owner is the government of Egypt. That would be bad if you are selling their stuff and not giving them a cut at least, right? Uh, many of the university's papyri are not published despite the lack of information on when re the recently deciphered papyrus was acquired. Okay, so um, Dosu he printed this or he he published this one just because the origins were kind of shrouded in mystery so there's no um he can't get he basically can't get in trouble for it but it says here that many of the university's uh, papyri are not published at all so think of all the crazy stuff that we're not even privy to yet that we can't even study and it's because they're afraid that they're gonna get busted for this so i don't know there's some it's just another example of a uh, government red tape getting in the way of uh knowledge and you know the betterment of the understanding of our history but whatever right <laughs> i mean look this thing's 10 centimeters long i mean that's not 
That's not that big. It mu those if I had to guess those must be props and those hands are probably there just as like an instructional. Yeah, see so you put these hands here and then you put them in the puppets and then they're probably just sock puppets and then you, they act out the spell. I wonder if anybody thought of that. And then they just didn't want to make the body because I don't know, maybe that's their version of first person view or something like that. I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, is this a magic spell? Am I wrong? Am I right? Is, is this just old school Muppets uh, masquerading as a magic spell for the normal lay person back in 480 Egypt? Let me know, guys. Or 780 Egypt. Anyway, let me know, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.